Tales of Estolia Volume 1 The Promise of Zacharias Part 5 According to Prophecy Chapter 8 Monsoon As I deciphered the inscriptions from each of the secrets, I was confused by references to the grand design. Estolians never ask themselves why deity bestows so much upon them. How do we fit into the grand design? I felt a chill of foreboding as I continued to translate. What will we, as a nation, do for deity that we are given such great rewards now? Deity was adamant in response to my prayers. Estolian society would play a crucial role in saving humanity from the ills of their own follies. What else would we learn when we were able to translate all of Key's writings? Xavier Archimedes, Zacharian, Adio. Callista went into Orion's bedroom. When she had returned from the hospital, she had stacked all of the presents in his room, unwilling to deal with them at the time. Now she ran her fingertips along the ribbons, tracing the raised designs on the fancy wrapping paper, wiping some dust off another. She pushed the wrapped gifts to one side to access several gift bags. The largest gift bag was the one she was looking for. She pulled the red and green tissue paper out, followed by the thick blue robe. She hugged the robe close to her for one bittersweet moment before leaving the room. Perhaps it was time to look back and remember the joy and happiness of that last day, rather than the trauma and loss. She knocked on the bathroom door. Here's a robe you can wear while I dry your clothing. He passed her the sodden bundle of clothing after taking the robe. She went to the closet at the end of the hall and opened the slotted folding doors, exposing the small washer and dryer stacked vertically within it. She pushed his clothing into the dryer and set it for a full cycle. By the time his clothing was tumbling in the dryer, he was leaving the bathroom wearing the plush robe. Thank you for your kindness. His smile caused her heart to lurch. She looked away, feeling awkward. Your apartment appears to be laid out exactly like mine. He caressed the quality fabric of the robe. I hope your brother will not mind my borrowing his robe. Once they were seated in the living room, he picked up the bulky envelope. She led him back to her living room. He followed her, sitting in a chair covered in faux leather. He picked up the bulky letter and opened it, drawing out the contents, a dark purple-blue colored ring box, what looked like a passport in the same color, and a letter written in a beautiful flowing script she couldn't read. Leon, I hope this letter reaches you in time. Since I first met Callista, I felt as if she was likely to be the one to keep your soul. Originally, her brother and I planned to bring her to Estolia for the holiday, but she lost her family in a tragic accident a year ago, and I knew I would have to approach it differently. By the time you read this letter, you should know whether she is the right woman for you. Remember that your blessing at 18 explicitly states that you should wed the woman who keeps your soul on your birthday. This means that deity sanctions your union as much as seven days in advance of the date of your birthday. Go gently, brother. She is fragile. With the trauma of her grievous loss a year ago, she needs understanding and care. Remember all that rests on your choices. I have anticipated your success and provided her with the necessary passport to travel internationally. If you discover that she is not the woman to keep your soul, I have enclosed a letter for her extending an invitation to visit. Please bring her to Estolia. Nico. <laughs>